I, I love the premise of the show. Smart people talking about dumb shit. I think it's dumb people talking about smart shit. Oh, we go where we not supposed to go, baby. The Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast, and this episode is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile, and it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag-and-drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Now let's start the show. Hezzy is here! Welcome back, bro. Man. Needed that. Needed that uh that eight days of vacation. How long does it take you to settle into relaxation? Immediately. Really? My wife says that shit all the time. My wife says as soon as you get uh on vacation, get the way you're going, everything stops. And that's a fact. I looked at my call, look at my call log. This is my call log, right? I ain't even paid this no attention to her this morning. This is my call log. <laughs> all missed calls. All red. <laughs> right. I don't fuck with my phone. No nothing. Like literally, like I'm just I'm I'm done, especially when I and I haven't been to Anguilla in two and a half years. Oh, oh, that's right, because of COVID. And everything, because of COVID, yeah. last time I was in Anguilla, Duval was with me. That's was December of 2019, going into 2020. Yeah, yeah. So right before COVID, right before COVID was the last time I've been in Anguilla. I didn't even realize I hadn't been there in two and a half years, and wow. I was just like, oh my god, home. Oh. Like I really love Anguilla. Like I'm going to die in Anguilla. Really? Yes. When I'm when I'm like ninety something years old, it's just gonna be whatever social media platform is out at the time or whatever it is, probably just be holograms that pop up. It's gonna be just a hologram that pop up that says radio personality, multimedia personality, Charlemagne the God dies at ninety years old. I might say civil rights activist based off uh the show Bust Down on NBC. You seen the show Bust Down on NBC Peacock? Nah. Yeah, they said they said uh history is history might remember me as a civil rights leader. But it was a joke. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? That's how fucked up the world is now. Ah, <laughs> I was like, did I miss something? <laughs> Maybe mental rights. We should, I... we should insert that. Insert that clip. Hey, look, all I'm saying is, if I'm being honest, we're fucked. We're fucked. You know? At this point, history is going to remember Charlemagne the God as a civil rights leader. It's tragic, really. I mean, come on, people, read a book. But yeah, they said that they might remember me. But whatever it is, I'm going to die in Anguilla at 90 something years old. I already see it. And what is it about Anguilla? Man, you can really feel God there, yo. Okay. I'm not even joking when I say that. Like, I feel God there, yo. And I can breathe under the water. Oh, God. Here we go. It's like you start with some shit that's believable and, like, relatable. And then you go into your, like, werewolf thing. I can breathe underwater in Anguilla. I'm you... not saying everybody can. Yeah, yeah. I just realized this week that I can. Yeah. I can breathe underwater. Is this why they think black people can't swim? Is because you guys are trying to breathe underwater? Like, are you just trying to spread the stereotype? There's going to be so many black people that are going in well. Like, now you just start breathing. And then I didn't just say it for everybody. It's just something I realized. Yeah, Because yeah. you know what it was? How did you, you realize it? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, break that down for because me, please. I'm in, the, I'm in the water, right? Like, I, uh -huh. I, I go in the water early in the morning, and yeah. I love to be in the water and looking up at the sun, right? I like to be looking up at the sun. I feel like when I pray, from the water to the sun, it's like a direct connection to God. Okay. And I believe in like grounding when you take your shoes off and like you're walking around the yard, you're grounding. There's no better grounding than having your feet at the bottom of the ocean and looking up at the sun and praying. And so it was just one of those things where I had like three or four run punches and I was like, why do people come up for air? And so I just went down there. Okay. And I literally was just sitting there for a while. And then I was just like... Oh shit! I can breathe under this motherfucker, yo. Oh, you don't realize how many black people are gonna die wow. because of this stuff. You don't realize it. It's gonna happen, and and it's gonna be your fault. And there's good. They're gonna have tweets like, "Yo, I'm gonna try that Charlotte yeah, shit." Yeah. So Aquaman ain't never killed no white people. Aquaman's white, bro. I, don't know. <laughs> I didn't say. It. I didn't say white people couldn't you know, not breathe underwater. Maybe he's Hawaiian. You know, whatever it is. Shout out to Jason Mawa. But I'm just saying, this is not good. This Listen, is not I, good. I, it's not for everybody. I'm just telling you that I can breathe underwater. You Taylor just Taylor just said, "How long do you think you can breathe underwater for?" I was down there for like 35 minutes. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> what? I had my watch on. I know. I had my fucking, I had my underwater watch on. I was yeah, down yeah, there for 35 minutes, yo. Your underwater watch on. I was down okay. there for 35 minutes cooling. Like, okay. 
like it was a thing. Like yeah, 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 really, yeah. people were going by snorkeling and they were just like waving. Yeah, yeah, like, that's that's what's up, bro. I'm just letting you that's know, fire. But do, do, are you selling any glasses that are unbreakable? Like <laughs> <laughs> I can see underwater too. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah a lot okay. of people are scared to do that because they think the salt water burns their eyes. Salt water don't burn my eyes. Interesting. Salt water doesn't burn my eyes. I can breathe underwater. I can stay under the water for a long time and my skin don't get wrinkly. Oh, wow. Maybe that's where you're supposed to be. I might be amph- I might be some type of... Amphibian. Amphibian, merman. Yeah. I might be Kin to Namor. I don't know. Kin to Namor. Namor. What is that? Oh, man. Namor the Submariner. You don't know Namor? No. Oh, you're not a comic book guy. You know Namor, right, Alex? A little bit. Like, Everybody will know Namor after Black Panther 2 comes out. Uh, He's the antagonist in Black Panther 2. But uh, how was your week? Uh, wait, the antagonist? <laughs> the antagonist in Black Panther is the water? <laughs> <laughs> The only thing that can stop a black man is a body of water taller than six feet. <laughs> oh, Yo, man. Marvel don't give a fuck. Marvel's bro. wildin', bro. Marvel did not <laughs> give a fuck. <laughs> God damn, They've Marvel. been hitting that name more, though. They've been hitting at him since. Oh, shit. They, well, actually, since. Uh, what's, the, what's the new antagonist in Shang-Chi? Is it driving a car straight? <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that the new, is that the new antagonist is that, in Shang-Chi, Oh, my bro? God. What, what is <laughs> oh, 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 listen. Man. How was you? You gotta check out that new Captain Marvel movie. Uh, uh, what's Captain the, Marvel. What's the antagonist uh, of Captain Marvel? Uh, letting it go. <laughs> that, have you? Have you? Have, did you see that one? Uh, all you gotta do is get into an argument with Captain Marvel. That's <laughs> right. that's why don't we talk about what you did a thousand years uh, ago? Oh my God! That's hey, how you why don't we talk about what you did three galaxies away a thousand years ago? Uh, uh, Oh, oh my God! Oh. Yeah, bro. <laughs> See, that's Namor right there. He nah, got the hoochie daddy that, shorts on. That shit is crazy. No, nah, that's Namor. Namor got the hoochie daddy shorts on. We gotta go into the water and fight him. I ain't going in the water. The submariner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yo, fuck that. <laughs> you know what's so funny? Come out. You know what's so fucking funny about this, and I never thought about it. <laughs> in Endgame, there's a scene. Remember when everybody's up as a hologram, and the guy says, uh, "She goes, there was an earthquake." There was an earthquake underwater yeah. off the coast of Wakanda or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, the, and the young lady from the Dora Milaje, they asked her what she going to do about it. And she goes, nothing. It's an earthquake underwater. We leave it alone. <laughs> like, she, they didn't she want knew. no <laughs> she parts knew. of it. She knew. But that was a, that was a, a, a Easter egg for Namor. Ah. Uh, yeah, that was an Easter egg for Namor. And um, I think it was Iron Man 2. And Iron Man 2, Iron Man is looking at a map of, like, different superheroes across the country. And you see, like, a dot uh, in the middle of the ocean. So that was supposed to be Atlantis, because you know that's where yeah. Namor. He's the king of Atlantis. Oh. You never heard of the underwater world Atlantis? Yeah, I have. What's the deal with that? Like, where was Atlantis? I'm hearing all these different like uh There's something under there, bro. You you truly believe that now it's covered by water? I, it's yo, know, it's it makes no sense for the earth to be 75% water and something's not going on down there, bro. Oh, you think it's still there? I think it's I believe in mermaids. I believe in mermen. I believe in Atlantis. I believe in all of that shit. You might be a mermaid, dude. I think so. I'm telling you, after what I witnessed this week, me breathing underwater. I mean, that is mermaid behavior. That is definitely mermaid. (laughs) Right? I identify as a mermaid. You do? Yes. And you should be able to. That's right. You don't even have to identify as it. Like, you can breathe underwater. You're a mermaid. That's right. And I came to the conclusion this week that my- Can I call you a mermaggot? (laughs) Mermaggot. My, I can't <laughs> Mermaggot is wow. Mermaggot. Listen, I came to the conclusion this week that my pronoun, we all should have pronouns, bro. Damn, bro, you ain't gonna you ain't gonna even chew that fish, you just gonna swallow it old mermaggot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yo, you know the wildest thing is a glizzy, bro. Why do they call hot dogs glizzy? I don't know bro. where that started, yo. Me neither. When I was a kid, we didn't call them glizzy. Hell no. 
That shit sounds disgusting. Like Glizzy <laughs> Gobbler. Like that shit is, bro. That shit should be a slur, bro. Like you should be able just to be out here telling people they putting Glizzies in their mouth, bro. That's wild. Y'all don't think that's wild? It is. <laughs> a it Glizzy? Is it is wild. I don't know when it started. <laughs> it's like Snoop saying gay, like back in the day, like Gizzle. The like gay. you know what I'm he's saying? Gizzle was gay? No, but that's how Snoop would have said it back in the oh, day. Oh, yeah, He'd yeah, have been yeah. like, you glizzle. You get, glizzle. You, you glizzle, get, my nizzle? Gli you glizzle. <laughs> I can't even start. Yeah. Yeah. But, dude, a glizzy gobbler is a glizzy crazy. glizzy gobbler is wild. Bro. Yeah, that's crazy. You a different bro. kind of glizzy. If you, 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 a different, you a glizzy gobbler? No, no. Like, why? You can't even eat a hot dog in peace yeah. without somebody saying, what you doing putting that glizzy in your Bro, mouth? Bro, there's a video. It looks like they were feeding glizzies to this special needs dude in Coney Island. Did you see the side talk video when they were out in Coney Island? Oh, <laughs> Bro, my what? Hand, one in each hand, and they just feeding him a glizzy at the same That's wild, so man. That was crazy. I seen the video where the dude had the hot dog and, like, the 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 hot dog was so long it was hanging out the bun. Yeah, he, he goes, <laughs> and right before he bites, you hear somebody go, "Hey, yo!" Yeah. <laughs> and he stops and he gets so <laughs> fucking mad. <laughs> you <laughs> might as well <laughs> just call him a slur because yeah. he got so mad. He was like, "Yo, you gonna put that whole glizzy in your mouth?" Dude was like, "Why the yeah. fuck? I can't just eat a yeah. glizzy and pee." <laughs> <laughs> favorite one is dude sneaks up on his boy who's about to eat it, and he just goes, "Hey, yo!" and dude. <laughs> Just goes <laughs> fucking <laughs> throws. <laughs> yo, hey yo, you spit up the glizzy, you got the glizzy, you glizzy got one. He just he chucks that shit, boy. Glizzy, glizzy is wild. And for nobody in New York to be pausing that, Jesus. Nah, we nah, that's a super pause. How would you and eat though? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know how your week was, man. <laughs> no hot dogs. I didn't take any hot dogs down. Uh, no, my meat, my my meat. No. <laughs> my meat was good. My meat was good. Had a good meat. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, y'all are crazy, bro. Y'all are fucking crazy. Where the glizzy gobblers oh, at, bro? Where the glizzy gobblers Shout at? Shout out to the glizzy yo. gobblers, bro. The, the semen demon. Have you, yo, this girl called herself a semen demon, bro. You didn't what? See that? No, man, this girl was crazy, bro. I yeah. Does she like to drink semen? Yeah, I guess she. Yeah, yeah. That's what glizzy goblin sounds like. Yeah, glizzy she, goblin yeah. sounds like somebody who likes to drink semen, bro. That's the girl who slurped up the suns, the Phoenix Suns. Do you remember that girl? No. She kind of went viral for that shit. But she called herself the semen demon. Like, how did somebody find out you sucked off a whole team? I think she said it. She, really? Yeah. No, nah, but she said it. She was like, but yeah. But what if yeah. she didn't really suck off the whole team? What if she sucked off like four or five of them? But then it's a whole bitch that's like, we didn't get none, no head. And now they getting in trouble at home. I thought you said bitch. A whole bench. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> practice bad habits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen. And, yeah. Did you see, um, yeah. there's so much shit that happened over the week, man, that I was thinking about. And I was like, did you see the woman who was pregnant in Texas? She's 34 weeks. Now, 30, oh, this fire. 34 this is weeks. Fire. I love this. I love it too. 34 weeks. The brain is fully developed. The baby's in there chilling. You know what I'm saying? The, the glizzy's growing. You know what I mean? And she got pulled over by the police because she was in the Hoveland. Now, Mind you, I didn't know what Hov Lanes were until I moved to New York. And when I moved to New York in 2006, I thought Jay-Z had his own goddamn lane. I'm he not going to lie. I was he like, does. yo, this guy is really the king of New York. And I, I, at first I thought that. Then I thought this meant where he, he must have got HOV from. But no, it was a short for Jay Hover. But mm. this woman got pulled over by the police. Is that the woman? Yes. 34 I'm weeks pregnant. Piece, bro. I mean, come on. She got her club shot up. Of course. She got a club shot? She got her club shot up. <laughs> And she says, <laughs> she says her unborn baby should count as a second person. If you know anything about Hove Lanes, it got to be you and another person in the car for you to get through a Hove Lane. What did she do wrong? Yo, because she got a ticket. She got cited for this. He starts peeking around. He's like, is it just you? And I said, no, there's two of us. And he's like, well, where's the other person? And I went right here. And I said, well, not trying to throw a political mix here, but with everything going on, this counts as a baby. I really don't feel like it's it's right because 
one law is saying it one way, but then another law is saying it another way. This is what I love. Okay. I love this like mental gymnastics that people are going to play, mm-hmm. play now where it's just like, if it's a baby. Yes. Then that counts as another person. Yes. And you should be able to drive in the HOV lane. I Simple agree. as that. Simple. Don't tell me that that doesn't count. That's right. When you're in, when you're on the highway, but That's it right. counts everywhere else That's in right. life. That's right. I think she needs to, I think she, not only should she not pay a ticket, she needs an apology from the city. If the city is mandating that rule, I think Texas is one of the states that's trying to. One of the biggest. Okay. And, and the officer told her that, no, this rule means that uh, the person has to be out of your body in the seat. That's not, I know that's not in the fine print. That's not in the fine print. Show me where it says the person has to be out of your body. Why should it make a difference? It shouldn't make a fucking difference. What do we say when a woman is pregnant? She's with child. She's with child. So if you're with a child, yep. boom, you get to drive in the fucking home. Yeah, I, I don't get that at all. What is the difference if she's if the baby's in the seat next door or if it's in your belly? I have no idea. We say it all. We say it. And uh, if you kill a pregnant woman, I don't you know. You get double word. homicide. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if it's true either, but I've heard it enough to repeat it. <laughs> 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 I've heard it enough. I'm, I'm assuming these people know what they talk about, talking about <laughs> when they say this. You should, bro. <laughs> look yeah, that up, you Taylor. Should, yeah. Can you look that up? Double Taylor? homicide. Yeah. Even the way you say that shit is glizzy goblin, bro. <laughs> Too glizzy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Now, I love that she did this shit. And it's true. If life begins in inception, and if I'm a girl, Taylor's wild, bro. What'd she do? <laughs> no. What'd she even try to Google? She, she I gotta know what she, she tried Google to Google. Double homicide. No. <laughs> Which, if the unlawful if you kill killing a, a woman people. that's pregnant, does it count as double homicide? Yes. If you kill a woman that's pregnant, because I heard it did, and I heard it enough to, 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 that I believe it, because that sounds fair. Yo, right. Uh-huh. If it's a life, yo, decide. If it's a life. Then you killed two people. They say life starts on gestation. What is gestation? Justin Bieber's new album. That's stop it. Up. Stop I don't know. It. Isn't stop, it gestation? Stop, stop, stop. What is gestation? Stop it now. Stop what it now. Gestation? You're going too far what now. What is gestation? You just said it, bro. You just said it. You just said it, bro. Stop acting like you're underwater, bro. You're not underwater anymore. You're just with us regular people now. You need to stop acting crazy right now, okay? Don't say this shit. Gestation? That's it, gestation. That's what you're saying, gestation. Isn't it? Now Taylor's reading legal documents. Taylor. Unborn victims of Taylor, violence. Taylor, just go back on TikTok, Taylor, and then when we need you, we're going we gonna to let you know and then we're going to bring you back into the podcast. Just go back on TikTok, okay? I don't even know what to tell Taylor at this point. I mean, it, no, it's okay. It's, it's okay. It's one of the if things it's, you move on. It's when we move on. Well, well we if it's on. true, if it's true that, you know, when you kill a pregnant woman, you get charged with double homicide, then that woman who's pregnant should be able to drive through the whole lane. If you're saying a baby is a life. Yes. And a woman is carrying a baby. Yes. And that baby is completely independent yes. from her. I that's agree. what the argument is. I agree. Hey, don't punish the baby. Yes. It's a baby. It has nothing to do with the mother. That's Those right. are separate lives. That's right. Every woman that's pregnant should be able to drive in the HOV lane and... Even if you're not pregnant, that's right. Driving that shit anyway, and just say you are. If they pull you over, and then what they gonna do? They gonna give you a pregnancy test right there? And what kind of dickhead? She's 34 weeks. You can see she's showing Mm. the brain is fully developed in a baby at 34 weeks. Absolutely, baby's dream at 34 weeks, and the bosoms was full too. I'm sure they were as hell. (laughs) And what kind of dickhead are you as a police (laughs) officer to give that woman a ticket? (laughs) Right? She's pregnant. Just let her go, and you got to give her an E for effort. Like you know what? That was That's good. Fire. That's that was fire. Good. You know what? Just, nah, that was no. good. Go ahead. Somebody else might not be so nice to you. Nah, but go ahead. That was good. Like, I come on. With that. And I'm going to tell you another double standard thing that happened. It happened in Jacksonville, Florida. I want you to add this to Taylor because this I, I, I truly believe this guy is being unjustly punished. This is dude named Jeremy Nix. Jeremy Nix. Jeremy Nix. I don't know if you've seen this video, but Jeremy Nix got charged with animal cruelty. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is interesting. Because his neighbor's rooster his neighbor's cock attacked him. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so he hit the cock in the head and accidentally killed the cock. Now his neck flares up and he's doing his thing and he's trying to jump up at me. So I pick up a stick in the yard and, and I try to hit it, but the chicken's jumping up at me and I accidentally knocked it in the head. I didn't know to give it a 21-gun salute, CPR, mouth-to-mouth, you know, or call the chicken ambulance. You know, I was feared for my safety. And the chicken died. Chickens are dying every day, people, at churches, Popeyes, and Kentucky Fried Chicken. Really. 
His thing is, like, number one, and fucking cock was attacking me. Yeah. Number two, chickens die every day, B. Every day. Popeyes, KFC, every fucking day. churches. So my thing is, if you're not going to punish, and forget the, we don't even got to go to the restaurants. Have you ever seen a chicken factory, bro? Have you ever seen when they when they uh, farm these chickens on these factories, the cruel and unusual punishment? Bro, we used to chase cocks. Really? I used to chase <laughs> I used to chase cocks with my grandma, bro. And we used to chase after these roosters. And when we would catch these cocks, we would grab them by their necks. And how Petey Pablo used to do that shit? Yeah, yeah. That's what we used to do with the chicken, break the chicken's neck. All in the name of food. We never got charged with animal cruelty. Yeah. These fucking farms and these factories that are killing billions of chickens a fucking year yep. don't get charged with animal cruelty. So why is this guy? Mm, I think you make a good argument right there. Is it something about like it's that person's property and you've destroyed that person's property? Well, watch your fucking cock. And wait, was that cock on the neighbor's property? Yes, he said he was being attacked by the cock. He said the cock got big and the cock like just looked ferocious. So he yeah. got scared. He grabbed a stick and hit the cock. I mean, if your cock is on my lawn... <laughs> I got to defend I'm gonna myself. I'm going to beat it down. I, 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 you, you should. <laughs> yeah. And he hit it right on the head. I mean, I'm going to hit at the head. I'm going to grab the body. I'm going to do anything <laughs> I can. do what you got to do to take that cock, cock down and eat the fucking cock. Yeah. And by the way, when you yeah, kill yeah. the cock, yeah, yeah. what you do with the meat? I mean, you have to devour it. That's the only thing to do is put the meat in your mouth. Yeah. yeah like, what yeah. else you going to do with the cock? <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree with you, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm 100%. There's nothing else to do with the You don't want the cock. You want it to waste, right? I'm just tired of the hypocrisy in this world. Yeah, me too, dude. There's no consistency. <laughs> yeah, we need consistency. <laughs> Everything man. is a fucking contradiction. If right. I kill billions of cocks a year for food, yeah. how can I charge this man with animal cruelty? When yeah. I And I'm going to go to Wendy's later and get some, a spicy chicken sandwich. Honestly, the animal was being cruel. The Explain. animal's guilty of cruelty. Ooh, not the well, person. Attacking the guy. Yeah, you're I right. I mean, he was, it's you're in right. Florida, right? He's standing mm -hmm. his ground. Mm -hmm. If that was a pit bull mm -hmm. that was attacking him and then he hit it, true. nobody would care. True, true. It, it seems to be an innocent cock, but not all cocks are innocent. Not all cocks are innocent. Not all cocks are innocent. Like you said, some cocks are ferocious. That's right. Some cocks are fucking delicious too. Dude. Yeah, they are. Most of them. All of them. Most of the cocks I've had, it fucking tastes good, bro. Cocks are amazing. No, they are. Every yo, if you've ever eaten a spicy chicken sandwich from Wendy's, you ever eaten Chick Fil A, I, Bojangles, Popeyes, you've eaten a cock. Can I cocks ask you? Are delicious. Have you Have you ever been about to order something? You're at Chick Fil A, and they're like, you ask, get the tenders, and they're like, you want three, and you're like, no, I want more, more cocks, cocks, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> give me, like, mother, like, give me like, motherfucking yeah, six. Yeah, like, cocks. I need six cocks. Yes. I want like twice the amount of cocks if yes. it's possible. Yes, man. So, yeah, no, that's crazy, bro. I scared the shit out of my six year old, too, because we was uh, in Anguilla <laughs> and we was at this beach shack called Blanchard's. <laughs> okay. And, uh, you know, chickens were roaming around, right? Yeah. The chickens and their little kids. And I go, those chickens want to talk to you. Because they want to know why you keep eating their family members. <laughs> <laughs> and she looked so concerned. She was like, I'm never eating chicken again. It was like it dawned on her like, this is what we're eating? Yeah. These cute little things that are walking around. My 14-year-old, she was like, I said, yo. Pull up then. That's right. <laughs> My 14-year-old was like, yes. More. I'm still hungry. I'm still hungry. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Chickens die. That's what funny as hell. Chickens die every day. Chickens B. die every, <laughs> every day. day. It's the truth. This shit does remind me of like the marijuana laws, though. though. What you mean? Because it's like they're making marijuana legal throughout the country, whether it's medicinal or recreational. But then they still yeah. got people in jail for marijuana. And and in some places, yeah. they're still giving you charges for marijuana. It just seems stupid. Okay, so that I feel two ways about this. One, I'm like, this is the worst thing possible that the same politicians that are putting or enacting or uh, laws and putting people behind bars are now profiting off of yes be and by profit I mean like these these marijuana uh, companies are paying them yes not paying them but like uh, campaign donations or however yes. the fuck you like bribe politicians on the other hand you're in jail because you did something illegal it was illegal at the time and and I guess you think if the laws change over time it just makes more if you give somebody life yeah. For something that was illegal. That's crazy. And then you make it legal during their life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Common yeah. sense should be like, yeah, he, they serve their time. So once the law changes. I, I would think. Now, does it work the other way? When 
something becomes illegal, all the people that we've known have done in the past, do we then punish them? That, what, what has been happening to us for the past five years? Go. Because of our speech. <laughs> what you mean? What do you oh, mean? Now, You've been doing that to us for, for how long? Okay, now let me let me do another one. They make abortion illegal. Do they come collect? They got the names. <laughs> Did they start knocking on the door? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yo. Yo. yo, you remember in 2000? Right. <laughs> yo. They would have been 22 right yo. now. Just, Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Right? Whoa. It's so it's Whoa. tricky, right? It is. It is. I think it's I think it's disgusting. You can make something legal and then make money on literally the state is charging taxes. Let's say, let's say the state was like, we don't want any money from this yeah. because we put people in prison for this. So we're not going to take any money. We're going to look the other way. You guys do your That'd thing. That'd be incredible. That'd be one thing. That'd be incredible. But if the state is profiting. I agree. And you got people in jail for it. I that's agree. crazy. I agree. I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. And I don't like it the other way around, by the way. Yeah. You want to be punished no, 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 for that, 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 that's, my, that's the analogy I use about speeding tickets. Like, yes. if, you're, if, you're, if you're driving on a highway that was 55, right? Yeah. It was 55. Or oh, no, it was 85 20 years ago. So you're doing 85. And then 20 years later, it gets reduced to 55. If yeah. you started getting speeding tickets in the mail from 20 years ago, you'd be like, what the fuck is going no, on? No, this was fine back then. That's my point. Yeah, I don't yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah. I don't like it the other way. But yeah. the, 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 if you're already in jail for something and they make it fucking legal, you got to let them out. Yes. Every state that's legalized marijuana, y'all get people 20, 30 years for weed. You got to let them out. Yeah. Come on. I think so. Come on. Even though they did break a rule, and you do get punished for breaking rules. Yeah. But if that rule also changes, you're basically saying, hey, that shouldn't have been a punishable rule back in the day. Yeah. It's like you're correcting your shit. Yeah. You know, like if somebody was in jail for uh, like, let's there was like racist laws. And let's say somebody broke one of those laws that mm -hmm. were racist. Once that racist law goes away, you got to let all those people out of prison because they were punished for an immoral law. I would think so. It, I mean, it's, it's, it's all weird. Like even with. The animal cruelty charge, I think that's going to get dropped. The HOV ticket, I think that's going to get dropped. But it's crazy that people even have to go to court for these things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the biggest annoyance. I, I just want, can, all I want across the board is consistency. I want it from everybody. Oh. I want I want the media to be consistent. You're going to be miserable, my friend, hoping you get that. Because I'm watching Hunter Biden snorting boulders. Yo, Hunter, and nobody's talking go, about it. Go. <laughs> I'll fuck with him. Go. That's, that makes him, that makes the whole Biden family relatable. Go. Why does he hate his dad so much? That's what we need to figure out. Pressure. Pressure. I thought about this. I thought about this on the plane ride home yesterday as I was reading up on it. Because that is Pressure. how to, like, the only reason you would record that interaction is is on some, like, subconscious level. You want to get caught, and well, you he's know. Been getting caught. I know. I know. Yeah. I'm saying it's like you know, getting caught hurts the people in your family, specifically your father. Yeah. Right. Like this is a. It's not a cry for help. It's a cry for fuck you, dad. Yeah, I read some excerpts out of uh his the the daughter's book. I forgot the daughter's name. It's the one that uh they caught in his email. He called her the the the, the c word that rhymes with punt, but she said, um, who called her that? Hunter called his sister that. And you don't say that word? No, I don't say it. I don't practice bad habits. Oh. And she said in the book that basically kind of like Joe cared about politics more than them. Yeah. So everything was about appearances. You know what I mean? So I guess Hunter's like, I ain't no motherfucking politician. I like this fucking, these drugs and I like these whores. Mm -hmm. And this is what I want to do in my life. Basically, mm -hmm. I want to live out loud the way y'all do. In Washington on the low. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I just think, I think it's rebellion against that. I really think it's just rebellion against that type of pressure. Having to live up to being, I mean, come on, say what you want. Joe Biden, I mean, I, I don't know how you measure success as a politician, but he's got to be one of the most successful politicians of all time, right? I mean, he became president. There's only 40, what, six of them? Damn, I forgot about that. I was thinking about <laughs> everything up. Yeah, I'm saying like, <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's it. The president thing. Yeah. It's hard. Is it really that hard to do? Yes, bro. <laughs> yes. yes, bro. That shit is fucking hard. He's ran three times. It's, it's not hard. hard. Listen, bro. it's not hard for the winners. I was watching the Obama doc on HBO. Seemed easy. Obama got it the first time out the gate. Yeah, it was. Yeah, <laughs> Obama yeah. knocked it out the park. 
first time out the gate. Yeah, he was nice with it, though. And didn't have a lot of experience. Yeah, but he was nice. Hillary, think about all the experience Hillary had, all the experience She's Joe awful, Biden had. Though. She's just an awful but person. That's my point. And so unlikable. There's nothing you can do about that. Like, some people are just so unlikable. Like, you look at her and you're like, ugh. No, you got, if, you, if you watch the Obama doc, you're like, wow. If you watch the Obama doc, it's really, like, night and day. Yeah. Because even though Obama is a politician, yeah. like, he's a politician true and true, he knew how to not be one. Yeah. Yeah. Like absolutely. there was one scene where like he's riding in the back of the car and it seems so stereotypical now, but the guy, the guy goes, yeah, you know, a lot of people say you're not black enough. And he goes, well, you know, when I'm walking through, you know, these neighborhoods, like in the South side of Chicago, first buzzword, oh, South side of Chicago. He's like, and I go into barber shops. Oh, <laughs> and you know, when I'm out just playing basketball, <laughs> I'm like, that just sounds so stereotypical. But in the moment, it sounded like just real, human and real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Whether it was or not, I don't know. I'm sure it was because they went, they actually cut to a scene of his barber the very next, you know, uh, whatever the fuck they call yeah. it in t television world. And the barber was like, yeah, the, the guy asked me, is Barack, does Barack, do I cut his hair to look like a white man? And I got offended. He's like, what the fuck does that mean? That's yeah. what the barber said. So it's like when you see that compared to the, like, Hillary at the time just being robotic yeah. politician yeah. talking about the issues. Lizard, yeah. It's like <laughs> yeah. people don't people H don't care about Hillary don't got it. She don't got it. She don't got it. She I love Hillary though. I like Hillary. Fair, but she doesn't have the intangible uh, thing that Obama has that Bill Clinton has. Say what you want about Bill Clinton, but that motherfucker is charismatic and charming. Everything is a story. Playing the saxophone on goddamn Arsenio. You know what to do. And they, and they said they said Bill never forgets a name. Oh yeah, never forgets Locks a name. You in? I mean, even watch him on like you can watch him on like Jimmy Kimmel or any of these like late night shows. He's incredible on the late night shows because every question he ties a story into it. He has funny quips. He's like witty, etc. It's like Hillary's just like you said, so planned, so robotic. I need power. How can I get power? And, and, and crazy part is Hillary's not like that when you. Just catch her cooling. Right. You know? And Bill Bill is always on. Yeah. It's about that life. I saw Bill. I remember seeing Bill at Tyler Perry Studios, man. He was shaking my wife's hand a little too long. I said to oh, Bill. yeah. I said, you shaking my wife's hand a little too long? Bill goes, well, you know, Charlemagne, you'd have had something to worry about 30 years ago. No, he didn't. No, no way. <laughs> he no, goes, he did. I'm harmless now. <laughs> no, he didn't. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. <laughs> Listen, Yo, it, was a, go. it was a joke, but it was hilarious. He's the best. You laugh your ass off he's at that. How, you, how do you not laugh at that? Nah, he's the best. You know what I'm saying? He's the best. Just, and don't twist that to anything crazy. It's just like, how do you not laugh at that? No, I mean, this is the most hilarious thing. <laughs> the fact that he just said it. He's, oh, and he, 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 did, he, he did like, he wiped his mouth. He, goes, he smelled his hand. He looked at Rashad. <laughs> no, he's not just saying. He's touching <laughs> right there. He just he he wiped his mouth. He goes, I'm in the mood for glizzies. <laughs> <laughs> He said, back in the day, your wife would have got this glizzy. I'm just saying, bro. <laughs> Yo, you know what's crazy? My grandfather said that to my father About after Lizzie's? meeting my mom. What? He was like, he goes, Larry, literally. He goes, Larry, you know, if I was 30 years younger, you wouldn't have a chance with this one. That's what, but that's, a, that's what I'm saying. That's an OG yeah, joke. That's like what's an old comic it's joke? It's a compliment. Yeah, but what's it's a like old, a street joke. Yes, yeah, that's yeah, an yeah, old yeah. street joke. Like older people will say, you had 30 years ago. Yeah, they, they do That's that. your way of saying, hey, your wife is beautiful. That's all they're simply yeah. saying. That's all. She can get this glizzy. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. what, what, come on, what Taylor, come on, can't imagine Bill Clinton wrapped in a bun. No, now Taylor think about the glizzy. She like, damn, oh, I can't even eat a hot dog it. no more. She like, she was like, I can never order a hot dog off the street anymore. Ever <laughs> again. Should we do, should we do this now or to pay a bill first? Let's, Let's pay, pay a bill. bill. Let's pay a bill. Let's pay a bill and come back and talk about Miss Macy Gray. Hennessy man, Hennessy man. Salute to Hennessy, man. Got nothing but love for Hennessy. Hennessy is the OG cognac out here in these streets. Uh, some people don't even think it's a party until Hennessy enters the building. Okay, Hennessy celebrates those who never stop and never settle in their never-ending pursuit of greatness. Maurice Ashley. Salute to Maurice Ashley. Maurice lives his passion 
Through his love of chess, he made history in 1999 as the world's first black grandmaster, an inspiring story of intellect and brilliance. His ability to push the potential of his own mind to new levels of greatness is universally inspiring. In the world of the mind, there are no limits. Hennessy, never stop, never settle. Visit www.hennessy.com to learn more about Maurice Ashley. That's Hennessy, H-E-N-N-E-S-S-Y dot com. Show, tell us why your hair is so beautiful, man. Guys, keeps. Simple as that. Keep your hair. You don't have to go bald anymore, okay? You don't have to. This is a choice. I've been on this over a decade, and look, my hair's looking luscious because I chose to keep it, okay? I'm telling you, Keeps has got your back, and it's incredibly affordable as well. They have generic versions that you can get for less than $10 a month. Keeps is going to be the thing that makes you look beautiful, makes you feel confident, and makes you avoid incredibly costly surgeries so you can get that hair back on your dome. So how are you going to get the Keeps? I'm going to tell you right now. Keeps is available when you go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash idiots, and you're going to receive your first month of treatment for free, okay? K-E-E-P-S dot com slash idiots. You receive your first month of treatment for free. But remember, prevention is key because treatments can take four to six months to see results. So make sure you act fast. Let's get back to the show. Uh, church announcements. What you got, Schultz? Hey, man. Big church announcement. This is the thing I've been to me. been waiting to uh, to talk to you guys about. But uh, obviously, uh, the special is coming out this Sunday. Infamous. I am uh, selling it uh, through my website. Uh, there's a uh, two week window where you can where you can buy it. But this Sunday, I want everybody to watch it. First comedy pay per view event. Uh, go get it, and you will be able to have it forever. We're going to send everybody who buys it a link, so you'll be able to have your your copy of it forever. Uh, but yeah, infamous. This is uh, it's been a big deal, big deal for me. I know, I know this took a while to get out, but there was basically what happened was I was it was with a streamer, and the streamer wanted to edit jokes, and uh, I was I'm done with the editing jokes, man. I made it here because I never had notes on my stand up, so I'm not going to change that now. You know, I put my stand up on YouTube and Instagram and all these places, and uh, the people really appreciate. It. I think they appreciate it was authentic. I think they appreciate it was real, and I'm not going to start watering it down now that I have this moment. So. I was uh, fortunate enough where I could buy back my special, and now I'm selling it directly to the people. I, um, first of all, you know, you know, I've always had tremendous respect for you, but I, I, that to me is like the most gangster shit you've ever done. Thank for, you, career wise. Thank you. because it takes a lot to drop your nuts on <laughs> any of these platforms. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, 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 whatever the screaming platform was for you to be like, you know what? I don't give a fuck because mm. number one, it says a lot about it. It, it says it, it shows your egoless. Number one, because a lot of people do shit like that for ego. The, oh, I need to be attached to the I streamer. Be the attached streamer to validates me. Yeah. This person, that person, whoever it is, Netflix, Amazon, whatever the fuck it is. I got to be attached to this yeah. in order to be be seen as somebody. Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? For you to have the respect for your fan base that you got to know that your fan base shows up for you and you say, no, I'm going to give this to my fans the way I wanted to give it to my fans. And the thing that also makes it not egoless is because you're not doing it for money. Of course, yeah, like it's a purpose behind it. You're yeah. like, I want like to give y'all these, back some money. You want to make you back your money, <laughs> yeah. but that's not your purpose. Your right. purpose is I want y'all to get this no, shit raw and yeah. uncut. We worked our asses on it. You know what I mean? Like Alex directed it. Like we, you know, um, I mean, I mean, Mark uh, produced it as well, and the shifty was editing it. Mark was editing it as well, and. And, uh, you know, Dove is producer. Like, this is the whole team. And we worked for months on this to make this the project that we want to be. And then I didn't want to, I don't want to do that. I didn't want to edit the fucking jokes. I'm sick of the fucking censorship. Like some dude in an office doesn't know what people want and what people appreciate and what people yeah. laugh at more than me. Right. Cause you're out there every night and like they make the edits on the jokes. The people make the edits on the jokes. No comic wants a bomb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I'm yeah. out there and a joke is bombing over and over again, I'm going to tweak the joke. Oh, yeah. my point isn't coming across. Oh, this punchline isn't funny enough. But if we get it and it's funny, and if you come to one of my shows, you see my shows. Absolutely. You see every different group of people in there. That's right. And and I'm not talking like political party, race, gender, all that shit. So it's like if all these people are coming together and laughing at the same thing, that is my litmus test. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's my research. I think, I think uh, these people in these offices that are trying to make offense free everything like yeah. everything got to be 
free of offense. Yeah. That's like trying to make a fucking vegan red velvet cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, like it's, yeah, you yo, can't yo, do red it. Red velvet bro. works, baby. Red velvet like, is red velvet. You either gonna eat this shit with all the calories, or, with all the or sugar, nothing at all. or nothing at all. Yeah. Like, cut it the fuck out. So yeah. I, I just I, I I saw that shit this week and I just I was like, yo, this is this is like dropping your nuts. Yeah. In a real way. Yeah. Like, fuck y'all. I'm putting this shit out. Something like that, you gotta support. Like, like that's the kind of thing that if you're an Andrew Schultz fan, you gotta support. And even if you're not an Andrew Schultz fan, that abortion joke alone. Thank you, man. I gotta see what else this crazy motherfucker is talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and the abortion shit is not really a joke. Nice. It's There's actually a lot of truth to it. I just want to let y'all know right now, ladies, uh, I am with you. I think it's your body, your choice. I agree with you on that. 100%. I agree with you when you say that men should have no say in the decisions you make with your bodies. Those are your decisions to make and yours alone. And I feel that way because uh, at the end of the day, when we all go up to heaven and God's like, why are we all killing babies? We're going to be like, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're very clear whose decision this was, God. Uh, <laughs> looks like you need to pay for your sins, babe. <laughs> Even though I paid for your sins. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Chivalry ain't dead to that baby is. You know the rules. That's a religious yeah. joke. It's on YouTube. The whole piece is on YouTube. That's it's right. It's like a seven-minute piece, so go check it out. But, yeah. I wonder how that works for real, though. You get to heaven, and you're like, ain't no y'all, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> Her body, her <laughs> you guys were adamant about this, right? Remember when y'all said, don't make decisions? You told us not to make the decisions. <laughs> but no, nah, that shit, that shit is gangster. And um, where they, where they go buy that? And uh, theandrewstoles.com. Just go get through my website. And I partner up with this uh, company called Moment House. So they're going to be handling all the live events and that's going on. And like, it'll be, it'll be really cool. And we got new fashion merch that's out as well. You can buy all that stuff through the website or just go to fashion.shop. And then we're going to do like a live hangout after the, after we watch the the thing together, all the flagrant boys are going to be in the studio. And we're going to go live with everybody. You can get that on the website as well. And um, dope. Yeah, man, it's just it's just fucking awesome. And the support and seeing people come out and do it is and just support me is is just great. So uh, that would be awesome if you guys want to support that. That would be fucking amazing. I would really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, just I I don't know. It felt like it felt like the right thing to do. Obviously, like. Financially, it was it was terrifying, but uh, at the same time, it just it felt like the right thing to do. And I've always, I don't know, you said something interesting to me, like early on, that's been very impactful. You were like, uh, you could be a man of the people or a man of the industry, and I, I don't think that you were black and white about it because I don't have any animosity towards streamers, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I have a fucking movie coming out on Netflix. I have a project, another movie coming out on Hulu. I have another project with Amazon, like. I will work with you. That that's fine. Absolutely. And I have empathy for the fucking executives. Like these people might not be passionate about stand up like I am. They're passionate about like building a business and running a company. They're trying to protect their jobs. Exactly. They that's have kids in fucking that's school. They have a mortgage. Job. Like I get it. The they don't want to take the. They don't want to take the heat for what you say. Exactly. Exactly. And it's like they don't want. They don't want to do because they're like, yo, that's not my passion necessarily. The executive board. And it's like, for me, that is my passion. So I'm going to fight for that. But I can understand where someone's coming from. You know, what I got to do is prove that there is a market for this and that people love That's this right. and it's okay. And then what happens in the future? It's like other comics see this as an opportunity if they don't want to censor their jokes. And once more comics realize they can make more money doing this than they can doing traditional right. specials, now the networks got to change their standards. Now the networks got to go, you know what? The people actually like this way more. Maybe we should loosen our restrictions a little bit. Yeah, especially when you already saying Chappelle can do what he wants to do because Chappelle is Chappelle and Chappelle's doing numbers. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to let Chappelle, you know, do it and you're going to take the heat for Chappelle, just take the heat for everybody. Like, what's the difference at this point? <laughs> I mean, if it's working. <laughs> if it's working, it's working, man. You know, so theandrewshows.com. Check that out. It's Sunday. We're all watching that shit together. Um order that up and uh, and just thank you guys everybody who's already bought it and reached out and spread the words like so many people people just writing articles and people just like tweeting it and people po post on Instagram and like because it's ballsy I, I saw a bunch of the articles nobody first of all to, to have the money to, to, to buy back your special very lucky very fortunate great but clearly good money management 
You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like it's clearly good money management right. for you to have the money tucked away to do it. Uh, but also, it's just like nobody would do that. People want to have their name attached to these screamers. They think it makes them bigger. That's that's what I, I don't know. That's why I always go back to the thing you said. It's like, to me, I'm validated by the people. Like, to me, like, the live show means so much to me. And I want it to be the best show that you've seen because you guys made my career. Whereas I think there are a lot of people like, as long as I'm in this movie with this company or as yeah, long, yeah, long yeah. as I'm doing this, like, that stuff's cool and it's fun, but it doesn't validate me like the people validate me. Right, right, like, right. I don't need to be an industry darling. I don't care about it. I don't need to go to the fucking parties. I don't, that that doesn't validate me as much as just, Walking down the street, the dude is fucking throwing out the trash. It's like, Schultz, that's right. What up? That's right. It's exactly like, am I with the people? Because it's impact. It's impact. That's it's, it. it's impact over reach. Because you might be on one of these streamers and you might reach more people. So you might, let's just say, let's just say eyeball wise, a million people see it. All right, cool. But man, when you impact a hundred thousand, when you impact 200,000, 300,000, when you impact, you know how much 300,000 people is? Yo, yeah. <laughs> like, who are like, like real impact, like that fuck with you, not, yeah. oh, I know him. Yeah. I saw him. On, no, they fuck with you. you like, that's the, that's the, that's the scary thing about this to a lot of people. A lot of people don't want to know what they're worth. I'm going to find out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. scary to people. Man, you know, uh, it's, it's something from that Barack Obama special. I heard it twice on the special. Um, David Axelrod said it to Barack. And Barack said it to somebody else too. He was like, "I'm, I'm, I'm not afraid you're gonna lose. I'm afraid you're gonna win." Ah! <laughs> you know what I'm he was like, "He was like, I'm not afraid you're gonna lose. Yeah, yeah. I'm what happens you're afterwards? Win. Yeah. Like that's when it's like, whoa. Yeah. But you're gonna win. You probably already won. You probably already made your money back. We're doing good. We're doing good. But there's, you know, there's, there's, there's more work. Like, like Kobe said, job's not job's done. Not like done. we got in order to change the game, it's got to be." It's got to be different levels to this, you yeah. know? And I want I want to reach those different levels. And and to what you were saying about, like, people seeing it, like, what I already experienced and, what, like, what is, I think, transformed comedy a lot is the effect of, like, YouTube and Instagram. It's like, YouTube and Instagram is where people watch comedy. It ain't Netflix. Like, it ain't, it ain't Amazon. It ain't any of these streamers. Mm -mm. Like, if you look at the numbers, I bet you all those streamers get more views on their YouTube and Instagram clips than they do in their own content on their platforms. Mm -hmm. And it's just because the algorithm's pushing it to everybody. So it's like the eyeballs ain't with the streamers. And if you can't say what you want, so you can't say what you want and you're not getting the eyeballs. The only thing they got is money. Yeah. And if and if the money ain't there, it's like, yo, you might as well bet on your fucking self yeah. and see what happens. Screamers are probably only good for like, I don't even want to say up and coming people, but like people who don't have like in a super established fan base shit. I think the opposite. I think you build the fan base by putting it in a place where the algorithm can push it into other people who like it. I think that the streamers are great when you're in a Dave Chappelle type situation where it's like you're ubiquitous. Everybody knows who you are and yeah. you're so popular. They're not going to tell you really that much what to say. So well, it's like he's winning so much. So it's like they'll take the heat. Like, exactly. So I, you know yeah. what I mean? I watched two, I watched two comedy specials this week. I watched, uh, I watched the old Bill Burr. I watched Bill Burr. Uh, uh, oh, Bill got a special coming out, man. Y'all should check it out. It's oh, on, on the twelfth. WNBA. Job. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah I watched yeah, the yeah. old one. I watched. What's the name? Uh, Tiger Paws? No, what was that shit called? Ah, uh, what's the Bill Burr special? Oh, uh, uh, Paper Tiger. Paper Tiger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I watched that. Me and my, my wife. My wife loved Bill Burr. Bill Burr is fucking hilarious. I yeah, watched her great. and I watched the. He's uh, fucking great. I wouldn't call the Chappelle thing a special. That was his, the talk at his school. Yeah. What's yeah, in yeah. the name? I watched that this weekend. Yeah. Um, speaking of live events, uh, Black Effect Podcast Festival, the first ever Black Effect Podcast Festival will be Sunday, August 28th at the Mirage in Brooklyn. Oh, shit. Yes. Tickets are on sale now That's at fire. blackeffect.com slash podcast festival. You can see 85 South Show, uh, All the Smoke, Horrible Decisions, Reasonably Shady, Big Facts Podcast. Uh, Will Lucas will be there with Black Tech Green Money. Michelle Williams will be there doing checking in. The Trap Nerds will be there doing the Trap Nerds po podcast. And uh, Tan Bam and AJ will be there doing We Talk Back. Uh, it's hosted by Little Duval and DJ Nyla oh, Simone. Uh, We're going to have food. We're going to have drinks. It's going to be all types of vendors. It's a festival. It's just a festival uh, with podcasts. So Sunday, August 28th at the Mirage in Brooklyn. Tickets on sale now at blackeffect.com slash podcast festival. Oh, Mouse, Mouse Jones will be there. Mouse will be Let's there doing go. a trap karaoke. Oh, they'll this be doing is trap fire. karaoke. So 
Yeah, it's a nice all day event. It's um, you know, it's like summer's over, like the wind down of summer. Yeah. So it's gonna be like one of the last big That's you fire. know, summer events. So um make sure you go get your tickets at blackeffect.com slash podcast festival. Now let's get back to the show. I have one more thing that I want okay. to say. And this is the cool thing. You always heard like the expression, like if you build it, you know, they will come like, yes. And like uh, Chris Rock had that fucking great joke about like people always help the person who's moving the car. That's right. Not to, and like, right. it, it it is crazy to see that happen. Like in real life, not only like the support, but, um, you know, uh, Jamil who does, uh, you know, our partnerships and stuff like that. He was talking to some companies. There was a company bet online, right? one of the biggest gambling websites, they heard about it and I'm sure they saw a synergy of, you know, better on yourself or whatever. But like, they basically, <laughs> they they were basically talking and basically bet online. Uh, they're flying 10 people out to New York City to watch wow. the special. But this is, the, this is the crazy. I was like, yo, that's crazy. This is the craziest thing. Okay. So the special is $15, right? Bet online, what bet online is doing is, is giving everybody who buys the special a fifteen dollar bet on Bet Online. Really? So you could make money on the special. Based off what? Like how many people watch it? Or? No, just if you got an email, okay. you're buying the special, you put your email in. That email you sign up on Bet Online or you have an existing account. Wow. You don't even have to deposit nothing. They're just wow. like, we will match that you buying the special wow. for 15 bucks and give you a better bet online. So I'm just like, hold on. So you're basically giving people the special for essentially free and they could potentially win money on it. Wow. Anyway, so I thought that was fire. It shouts to, I got a shout out bet online on that. So so go get that right now. Anybody pre-orders that right now, you will get that. It's crazy that companies like that don't just sponsor shit like that though. That's but that's awesome. That is a yeah, it's a sponsorship because I mean, yeah, because yes, you're talking about them a lot. Like, yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. But I don't know, for me, like that's all the value. I'm just like that, that I thought that was just that was the perfect thing. Like I love it. I, I had this conversation when I was in Cannes Lions um, about advertisers, and I was talking about how like they were asking like, what's the benefit of advertising on like podcasts, things like that. And I, I, I it, this applies to more than just podcasts. But I was just like, yo, if there's millions of people tuned into something, right? And I, and I always use horrible decisions as an example, right? Because people people love horrible decisions, but advertisers are scared of horrible decisions. The reason is because they're, I, I just think it's two black women talking about sex because every Explicit other... Explicit content. Yeah, every other Very profitable podcast, when you see the white girl. That's girl. what yeah. I'm saying. So it's like, it's just it's just strange when that happens. But it's like, if there's millions of people watching something, millions of people into something, why does it fucking matter what your brand thinks of it or people in your office think of it? You just want to be where the people are. You know what I'm saying? So if there's millions of people tuned into something, yeah, clearly these millions of people cannot be wrong. Bro, <laughs> I, 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 would, I would even go so far to say is that like a podcast are the most devout supporters. Yes. Right? Because like if you're on a show that just happens to be on TV, somebody might be scrolling. They're going to bump into it. You're not scrolling and bumping into a two hour podcast at all. Like, at all. These are people all. you actually fuck with, you That's know, right. intimate details That's of your life. So it's That's like, right. low key, you got to pay. You should be paying a premium to access. That's right. The most devout supporters. That's right. So like, hell yeah, any brand, they'd be stupid to not want to be part of this. And when they say stuff like, well, it, it, it's it's too edgy for who? Yeah. Millions of people are tuning into this they every learn, week. They go, and they're going to learn the hard way. You know right. how they learn? It's always the bottom dollar. It's It's their competitor takes that. Like if I'm horrible decisions, I'm I'm going after the competitor of the big brands. I'm going after the number two. Word. No, I'm going after the point. number three no, company, no. and that's then I'm point. blowing them up past the number one. And now the number one is like, fuck, we messed up. We were playing prevent defense. We were pussy, and then we lost out on all that money. That's right, hundred percent. And Stop that's all afraid. it is. I mean, I, that's that's, my, that's the moral of the story. Stop being afraid. Stop having these focus blogs to see if your brand fits with this and that. Nobody gives a shit, bro. Mm -mm. <laughs> you, you either going to be where the people are or not. This is the same <clears throat> shit with the execs. That's right. It's like they're trying to make the best decision, but they're not with the people. It's very easy. You can see. That's why I don't know when, when, when that, that phrase, I don't know how that phrase holds up in 2022. If you build it, they will come. Like, no, you got to build it and you better meet people where the fuck they are. 
That's what you're doing. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> you know what I, I see what you're saying. You're saying you got to build it, but you also got to put it in a place they can access it. You better meet them yes. where they are. Yes, And yes, you better yes, go yes. to them if you have to. <laughs> and if they're on social media, you got to put it in front That's of them right. on social media. That's right. That's what I realize about people is like, if you give them the opportunity to enjoy the content and it like impacts them, you know, if they have a fucking tough day and then you just make them laugh. That's they right. appreciate that shit and they'll come back for more. That's right. But you got to at least put it in front of them. It's That's like right. if you open up a restaurant on an island, deserted island, middle of nowhere, you can't be mad if motherfuckers don't come. Who know the food fire? That's it. Who know? Yeah. If you got them fire glizzies, you got to let motherfuckers know you got the fire glizzies. Sometimes you might have to give some glizzies away. And people will gobble them, bro. And people will gobble them. Now, what did Macy Gray say? Oh, uh, Big Macy Gray. Macy Gray. Oh, cool. <laughs> big yeah. Macy. Yeah. Macy was on, I don't mean, you know what I mean by say big, like big. Like, it's like size. No, man. Like <laughs> big dog status. Macy oh, Gray. Okay. And I, I will say this and everybody's going to hate me, but as a woman, just because you go change your parts doesn't make you a woman. Right. Sorry. You feel that? I know that for a fact. What do you think of Macy Gray's statement? Um, Yo, we had a, a trans uh, woman on the show. Her name is Daisy Taylor, trans porn star. And um, and she just really just, yeah, she just really uh, convinced me, man. Like, I I think that I understand where she's coming from and she's defined herself with body parts and with that biology. And I think that makes sense. But there's 7 billion people on the planet. Mm -hmm. Peep, all sorts of weird shit happens, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, obviously, the design for more, most people is for... for the design. Nah, <laughs> it is a make and model, isn't nah, it? No, there is a make and model. It's like, <laughs> dude, chick, they fuck, they make more dudes and chicks yeah. who also fuck, we continue the population. Mm -hmm. That was the idea, right? Sometimes a person's born missing something. Sometimes a person's born with a little bit more. Mm -hmm. There's 7 billion versions of it. There's going to be some things that are twisting and turning. And I think that there are people who have some things that are twists and turns and they were born in the wrong body. Ooh, so that's, I, that's a good that's a good discussion. So is it mental or physical? Well, I think obviously the body is physical. Now, what I also and then obviously I think that the feeling is mental. But I what I also think happens is. We are human beings that are drawn to trends. And I think that things become trendy and then we often do them. Mm -hmm. We've seen it happen with face tattoos and then people regret it. I think we've seen it happen with clothing. And I think we're seeing it happen with, with maybe a gender identity mm -hmm. where people are, uh, maybe over it's more on the menu. Exactly. But it's maybe there's an overcorrection because we were so rigid before. Yeah. Right. So now there's this, oh, there's a, a, a hundred different genders. Because before it was like, there was only two. And I think that there are people that are trans and they are born in the wrong body. And that is something that they struggle with. And the best way that they know how to handle it is by getting a reassignment surgery. That's the best option they have so far. Mm -hmm. And even then, it's probably still very difficult. And then I think there are also like young kids who think that it's cool or there's like social points if they identifies that and mm -hmm. then in school and they're and they're and they're kind of going through that process that's I just, what I, I, I just think it feels wild to tell somebody um and I, and I, listen i'm sure it's more than this but to tell somebody i am you because i feel like you well she's not she's not she's not they're not saying i am you they're saying i'm me and i think that's the distinction a lot of people don't but, get. but they're saying they're women yeah but like <laughs> yeah i'm me which is a woman not i'm I'm you. Why can't they just say they're trans women? Like, why why can't trans women just be its own category? Like that's that makes more sense to me when yeah. I see trans women are trans women. Yeah, and then there's uh, women that were born women. You know what I mean? Like to yeah. me, that's got to be two totally different things. I could never know what a woman's experience is on this planet, bro. Yo, and a trans woman's experience is going to be totally and different I could never from know a, what a trans woman's experience. That's right. That's and right. a black woman's experience is going to be totally different right. from a white woman's That's experience right. and so on and so forth. I, what I'm saying is with 7 billion people, we're talking about billions, bro. We're not talking about millions, billions. I think it's possible that there are some wires that get switched up and people are born with certain things that 
weren't part of the original model or design. Well, how did those billions and billions of people find a way to all go to McDonald's? McDonald's has served every <laughs> single one of them. <laughs> how has McDonald's found a way to serve every single one of those people? What does McDonald's it's, have? It's the greatest that restaurant in history. It's the greatest restaurant. Everybody can agree on. It's the greatest restaurant in history, bro. It's just what it is. It's like every culture, like every single group of people on the planet yes. fucks with McDonald's, bro. Regardless of what you identify as. You, you identify as a quarter pounder love. You love that quarter pounder, Tim bro. Fries, bro. That's they facts. <laughs> it's, it's crazy, but it's true, bro. It's crazy, but it's true. I just, I, I'm listening. I listen to women. <laughs> and, and if a woman tells me yeah. that, you know, I, that's, to, to me, this shouldn't have been backlash. It should have been a discussion. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, yeah. like, like I have the conversation. Instead of being so quick to stick a glizzy in somebody's mouth, and choke them out. Yeah. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, actually have the conversation. But yeah. I'm not about to argue with no well, I think, I think woman Macy, on what makes a woman. I think Macy should just talk to more trans people. Like, just to have a conversation. Like, for me, for me, that's what was transformative. Yeah. <laughs> I transitioned. More than meets the eye. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for me, it just was like, I don't know. I mean, Al, you were there too. Like, did you, did you have that same feeling? Yeah. Like, I didn't get it before having that discussion with it. I, be, I believe yeah. in trans women. I believe that they believe exactly what it is they say. Yeah, I believe they it. feel the way they feel. I'm just simply saying that I think that there's a trans woman experience and then there's a biologically I, I born and, woman experience. And I don't think they would disagree with that at yeah, all. Yeah, I don't think those experiences are the same yeah, at all. And, and I think that's why, fact, like... It can't be the same. Well, I think that's why the conversation... All right, here's the tricky thing about this. There are so few people who are out as trans that the average straight person male or female hasn't even had a conversation with one okay that's true. that's true and it's very similar so we don't even know what they're saying and what they feel and a lot of times the only people that we hear from are like the most extreme versions of the group because those are the people that get the media attention. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. if you, the average trans person, I've spoken to a few trans people, like when they talk about like the sports thing, like the women in sports, they, they're like, they literally are like, you know how bad this is for trans rights? Because now everybody hates us because this one girl wants to That's swim. Right. It's like, That's right. girl, there's a bigger issue here. That's like, right. Like the trans community, from what I hear from them, they're worried about getting like beaten up or they're getting worried about getting killed. Actual they're not worried civil, about swimming. Yeah, actual yeah. civil rights issues. Exactly. Yeah. So, so they're like, you're putting negative attention on us and like giving people a way of like shutting us up or silencing us up when you're doing this. So they, and then you hear one of them say that and then you're like, oh, okay, so we kind of agree on all the same things. And they're like, yeah, yo, this is just how I feel. That's why I, one time D-Way was talking about his uh his, his daughter. Yeah. And D-Way was talking about how, um you know, he was talking about how transgender rights are being stripped away, but he was using the the the, the women. I, it was some, I think somebody banned women, I mean, uh trans, trans people from playing women's sports. I forgot what state it was. Yeah. And I was like, yo, you're conflating. Ohio maybe or something like that. But I'm like, you're conflating two issues. Like, Yes, we want all people to have rights. You yes. know what I mean? Like, we don't want to see people being hurt for who they are, yeah. discriminated against for who they are. We don't want yeah. that. But the women's, uh, the, the, the trans women playing women's sports is a total different issue. Different issue. And then when you muddy them, it just makes everything uh, more difficult. Because it's like, is that what you call trans rights? And, and, and people who don't know, like, is that what they call it, trans rights? And it's so much harder for the average person to, to believe and support that. The average person is going to see the competitive advantage that a dude to transition into a woman has yeah. over women. And they're going to be like, yo, I got daughters. Like, you got daughters. You want your daughters to be able to compete on a level playing field, not against someone who has genetic advantages. Absolutely. So if that's the discussion, then the trans community doesn't get heard, really, because they're going to have to fight for that girl. And then the community is so tight. They're like, well, I can't speak out against this girl because they're fighting for, I guess, our rights. But at the same time, you fucking everything up. You know, and again... I could be, I'm paraphrasing what uh, these uh, women I've spoken to said, so my bad. I don't know exactly what you're saying, but I, I'm doing my best. My point is, like, there's so few trans people and so few straight people have trans friends that they don't even know exactly how they feel, and they're getting the most exaggerated version of mm -hmm. how they feel and then arguing with that. It's It's very similar to, like, back in the day when white people and black people were not friends, mm -hmm. right? 
or the friend groups weren't as mixed. And you even see it now. Like they're just kids who don't have white friends mm-hmm. and don't have black friends. And the things they say about one another can be like borderline racist, even if they're not intending to be because they don't know what's considered offensive or yeah, not. Yeah, 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 you know yeah, what I'm saying? Absolutely. Like like a white lady that doesn't even realize it's wrong to like ask if she can touch your hair. Right. Like it's not like she's she has malice and hate in her heart. She's just walking up and going, oh, that looks really beautiful. Let me do it. She doesn't understand the sensitivity. Right. So but a white girl that grew up with you and went to school with you is like never going to do that because you probably she probably seen it happen to you and then saw you get offended or something like that. And then she's like, oh, that's a, a line that you don't cross and you have to learn that. So I think what will probably happen in the future is there'll be more straight people that have friends that are trans and then they'll know one, how most trans people feel about things. And then two, what line is crossed or not. Absolutely. That's what I think. That, but, but look, Macy's right in terms of the experience is not the same. It's not the same. And I think that's all Macy is saying. But no I, trans person would disagree with that. Like why, why it's like an honest statement. Like, but it's an well, obvious people statement. People got mad. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I don't pay attention to the backlash. I just heard people got upset. And then I know they got mad at our, 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 our homie Flame. Cause you know, Flame spoke out in support of Macy Gray, but Flame has always said, I'm not a woman. He's like, I emulate a woman. Yeah. He's like, I, I, I went and got breasts and everything else. And I wear dresses sometimes. But he was like, I would never disrespect my mother or my aunt by saying, you know, you know, what did I am a woman? Like, just let Flame play Flame comments himself. Good evening, everyone. My name is comedian Flame Monroe. I am a transgender woman or person, however you describe it. And this message is directly for Macy Gray. Macy Gray, I want to tell you out the words of my mouth from my portion of the LGBTQIA plus community that I wholeheartedly support you and thank you for seeing the real world for what it is. I do not believe that you are transphobic or homophobic or any other kind of phobic. I believe that you know science and biology because here are the three things. Gender is a fact. Identity is how you feel and sexuality is your desire. And you are absolutely right because until you have that the right heart there. and mind of a woman, that was so I don't believe that you could ever possibly be a biological woman. Trans women are trans Trans women, trans men are trans men, women are women, and men are men. It is as simple as that. There shouldn't be any argument about this. I'm going to tell you something, man. Flame breaks it down so clear and so concise for everybody to understand, because that's all it really boils down to. And I think that's where people push back, because it feels like in a lot of ways they're trying to uh, play with people's reality. Are there... You know, just trying to make people believe things that we know not to be true. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I don't think trans people are ever saying I am a biological woman. Yeah. And if they are, then they're inaccurate. Yeah. I think what they're saying is that they are a woman in terms of how they feel. I don't like what you were saying, how trans women, they have the nerve to get upset when we're saying they're not really women. Like, you don't know how I feel. You don't know my body parts or anything else like that. Yeah. Getting stuff does not mean you're a woman. I really agree with Macy Gray. And I don't know why people had to add you with it. Got you. How do you know that they don't feel the same? They, how, you, you, what does that even mean, though? Like, did anyone ever ask them, like, what does that mean to feel like a woman? Because to me, no offense. Valid question. I had to cut it out. But I feel like it's this dress up. You do not know how I feel as a woman. Women like to dress up. But, but you're, you're, you're saying it's part. more than that. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Part. That's a valid question. That's, that's not a question I'm here to defend. I'm not a woman. <laughs> Frankly, I don't, I don't know. Y'all can figure that shit out yourselves. That's how I feel. I'm like, listen, yeah, I, 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 I agree with what Flame said. Flame, what did she say? Flame said gender is, gender is a fact. Identity is what you feel. And sexuality yeah. is your desire. I yeah. think that is so I think that's beautiful. profound. Um, let's pay some bills. Come back and do some Ask an Idiots, man. Let's do it. All right, guys. This episode today is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website. Engage with your audience and sell anything. Your products, content you create, even, excuse me, your time. I'm telling you, you do not have a business unless you have a place online. Websites are fucking hugely important. Look how important it was for me, able to sell the special through my website. So 
I suggest that if you have a business, you have a site for it. Okay, Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock new revenue streams for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content like videos, online courses, or newsletters. Create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. Stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. Collect and email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logo. They got the built-in analytics to help you with absolutely everything. Squarespace is your one-stop shop for all of your website needs. And if you head to squarespace.com slash idiot, you get a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot. You can save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Remember that's squarespace.com slash idiot with the offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase. Hey, before we uh, continue on, I forgot to say this during church announcement. Salute to everybody in Charleston, South Carolina, man. You know, my birthplace, uh, my, my, my hometown is Monk's Corner. I will be down there this Thursday. You know, this weekend, they're having the Denmark, B.C. Bicentenary. And it is celebrating the 200-year anniversary of uh, Denmark, B.C.'s <sighs> planned slave revolt. He didn't uh, actually get a chance to revolt because he got ratted out uh, by one of the other slaves. But it's going to be uh, July 14th through the 16th at the Gill Yard Center. And I'll be there Thursday uh, doing a panel discussion at 7.30 p.m. called Truth Be Told, okay, with, uh, you know, Kamal Bell and uh, Dr. Tanya Matthews and then some some other great historians on the legacy of Denmark, V.C. If you've ever um, read my first book, Black Privilege, and you know how much uh, the story of Denmark, V.C. influenced me coming from Charleston, South Carolina, Monk's Corner, South Carolina. So join us this weekend. Um, Little Duval. The GOAT. The GOAT, Duval keeps posting this video. He's been posting it for years. I don't know why all of a sudden this morning it became a thing. But he's been posting this video of him twerking that ass at a at a high school talent show in 1994. This is Duval. You've seen this video, right? No. Nope. You've never seen this video? Nope. This is little Duval at a high school talent show in 1994. And what Duval was trying to say is every Florida boy danced like this in high school. That is a fact. Go watch old 69 Boys videos. Go watch old Uncle Luke. Men used to wear biker shorts. Yo, hoochie, yo, fuck a hoochie daddy short. Niggas was out here in bikers, B. Okay? That's... Wait. You I never I never did that. <laughs> Where's Duval? I will, that's Which, Duval right there. In the middle? Yeah, in the middle. He's going to look back. Yo, you, 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 I'm going to tell you when you're going to know it's Duval. Just keep watching. Watching. That's Du. Pop. Pop. Pop, hey, oh, just... now watch Do. This is how you gonna know it's Duval. Forever the showman. Just watch at the end of the video. Watch at the end of the video. Watch him, watch him. Oh yeah, he popping it. Look at the point. Ooh, watch this point. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> That's how you know it's Doobie. Too far, that point at the end. You see that point at the end. By the way, he not twerking though. He's more fucking. Like that stroke. Y'all didn't no, grow up in the 1900s. You think he was throwing it back? No. Not me. That was the night we do be talking when you fucking. Bro. I'm on my back. Bro. Nah, you talking when you. I'm on my. You ain't back. sliding, bro. You up and thrusting. Nah, up bro. And thrusting. I'm on my back. You and I hit him with the popcorn. Ain't no way, bro. Ain't no way. No. Nope. On your back is even crazier. On the back and then just popcorn. Pop, 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 pop. pop. <laughs> yeah, nah, bro. You gonna hit him with a popcorn a little bit <laughs> nah, on the back, bro. Pop, 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 on pop, your pop, black is real. On, on your my back. black. I'm on my black, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I get on my black and I hit him with a little popcorn. On your back because you got your ass to the sheet, so that means that you like. Your ass is rubbing the sheets at the same time. Yeah. 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 Hey, talk about you don't like the glory hole. I don't Bull like the glory shit. hole. I like, I, I, I do like my glory hole a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but this is regular. Yo, in the 1900s, Remember? this is how so many of us used to dance, bro. When Uncle Luke said, in the put 1900s, your hands up. That's high. wild, baby. To say that in the 1900s. That is the 1900s. God, you know how damn. long ago 1994 was? 1994? <laughs> Yo, do you know how long ago that was? <laughs> Bruh. Put you, when Uncle Luke said, put your hands up high, your back down low, not high, draw it to the floor. Boom. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> 
No, hydraulic. No, 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 Taylor. Hydraulic. That's Megan. Hydraulic mean up and down. You got to have them knees. First of all, don't tell me about twerking, bro. You, I you, honestly you, think you, you might ain't hurt even yourself got to ask if me. you try to do that. Exactly. I honestly exactly. think you might hurt yourself. She be mad jealous of me because I got ass. I know. That's her, the yo. thing. Yeah, yeah. I got more ass than you and my knees sturdier. Relax. Yeah, that's facts. Relax. Nah, that is facts. That is Relax, facts. Relax, Taylor gang. Taylor, you got to chill Okay, out. you think just because you was born as a woman, you the only person out here <laughs> that got ass and can twerk and got strong knees? Okay. <laughs> I'm about to show a picture of video with Megan. The one you oh were. I just like this point. <laughs> that point at the, the end point is super wild. Duval, bro. Charmaine, the one where you were so much match with, like when Megan was twerking. Remember that video? Yeah. That's exactly what he's doing. I know. You ain't got to okay. tell me. The only thing that makes this glizzy <laughs> is the choreography. The fact that they playing this. All three of them are doing the same dance Yeah, they together. got the same outfits on. Watch this. Watch this. Glizzy gob. <laughs> you see, he did glizzy gob. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Duval though, man. Duval. Showing us, showing them how to, showing the kids how we did it in the 1900s. Ain't nothing y'all got new, bro. Yeah, that's facts, bro. Nothing, nothing y'all do is new. Nothing, nothing changes, dude. Everything is the fucking same, man. Y'all just remixing shit. Um, did we talk about Kevin Durant? What he do? Ray J just playing. He's saying he's changing, changing his name to Tron. I mean, no, Kevin Durant just wanting to trade. Oh, he's officially said it? Oh, yeah. You didn't know that? Oh. He said that like two weeks ago. Nah, man. Yeah, he said he officially wants to trade. If I'm not, if I'm Brooklyn, I'm not trading. Yeah. If I'm not if I'm Brooklyn, I'm not trading him or Kyrie Irving. Yeah, play it out. Y'all gonna play it out. We have done nothing wrong to y'all. Yeah. This is where y'all said y'all wanted to be. Y'all picked the coach and everything else. Yeah. Kyrie, you could have got vaccinated last year. You chose not to, and I respect Kyrie Irving. Didn't choice. help at all? He, listen, he was playing in the playoffs. He made and a they choice. still bummed it up. He made a choice. And then when he played in the playoffs, they got swept by the Celtics. Yeah. Listen, he made a choice. People make choices every day. You got to live with the, the consequences of your choices. I'm the Brooklyn Nets. First of all, you're not going to get nothing for Kevin Durant. Why not? Because he, they, he, he demands too much. Whatever you give up for Kevin Durant, you're fucking gutting your team. You know what I mean? You're going to give up. All of these first round draft picks, you're gonna give up two. They say they want two all stars and a bunch of first round draft picks. Who KD gonna play with if he goes? Like, I, I saw the, the Suns. The Suns had a good package. But at one point, they said they wanted to give up, uh, they wanted Devin Booker. You're not giving up Devin Booker. Also, Kevin Durant don't wanna play with Chris Paul. You don't think so? Nobody wanna play with Chris Paul. Really? I think Chris Paul's a perfect thing for somebody like Kevin Durant. Well, no. He's a leader. Uh, nah, but Chris Paul gonna yell at you. And, That's the leader. Yeah, but but Kevin Durant's at a point in his career like he don't need all that. What he want? Kyrie I, needs to get yelled at. Kyrie need to get yelled at, but he won't be yelled at. So then he's gonna have a problem. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's the thing. It's like he's at a point where he's not gonna be yelled at. I mean, it was too much even just playing with LeBron. So it's like I think Kevin Durant wants to be back in uh, Golden State, where it's like, yo, we're gonna run the offense through you, have fun, be dominant. We don't have any uh, over-the-top coaches. We don't have any over-the-top personalities on the team outside of Draymond. But Draymond's not even the best player on the team, so he can't really tell you what to do. And he's Steph, a leader, though. Say what? He's a leader. Who? Draymond Green. And I, 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 talk, I think he'd rather deal with Draymond than Chris Paul. Chris Paul, people hate playing with him, bro. Draymond's a beast, though. You'll listen to Draymond more. Draymond got, got the rings. rings. He got the ring. You got to pay he got attention. Four rings. God knows what he's doing. But Golden State has so many great leaders. Steph Curry is a great leader. Draymond Green is a great leader. Steve Kerr. You know, Andre Iguodala is a great leader. Steve Kerr is a great leader. You know what I'm saying? Klay Thompson is a great leader. Like, they have so many great leaders. That's why Jordan Poole can come there and have success. Andrew Wiggins can come there and have success. James Wiseman is going to have mass success next year. They can take that, that young core and grow them up the right way because of the people that they have in position. That mm -hmm. shit ain't for everybody, man. And it's a very egoless team they have. Yeah, that's the beauty of it. And that's trickled down. It's like, if Steph's going to have no ego, you can't have any ego because you're not better than Steph. I know y'all keep hearing me say the word ego. Shameless plug. Let's go, Ryan. This is my favorite book, I think. I've read this book so much. That's why it looks like this. <laughs> like I even had it on vacation with me because I constantly read it so much. And, and the, what I read the most is the success chapter. Um, Because I want to read y'all one thing from the success chapter because it just it's 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 so real, man. Um, success. This is just how this, it starts off. Here we are at the top of a mountain we worked hard to climb, or at least the summit is in sight. Now we face new temptations and problems. We breathe thinner air in an unforgiving environment. Why is success so ephemeral? Ego shortens it. 
Did I hit that word right? Nope. What What is it? Ephemeral. Ephemeral. And really? This book. How, How many, many times, times you read this? <laughs> I be fucking that word up every single time, bro. <laughs> Ephemeral. A formal sound. Wow. That sounds like an identity. It sounds like, it doesn't sound like an identity. Hey, what are you, a formal? Uh, ego shortens it. Whether a collapse is dramatic or a slow erosion, it's always possible and often unnecessary. We stop learning, we stop listening, and we lose our grasp on what matters. We become victims of ourselves in the competition. Sobriety, open mindedness, organization, and purpose, these are the great stabilizers. They balance out the ego and pride that comes with achievement and recognition. I read this book so much because you have to constantly keep reminding yourself. And, 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 I, and when I read it this week, there was a part in the success chapter that talks about the more you accomplish, the less you should know. Think about that. The more you accomplish, the yep. more success you get, the more money you get, yep. the more you accomplish, the less you should know because it's always new territory. You're always like, you're like, for example, you're putting out this special. I see what you're, you I don't see. know what could happen with this special. Yep. You just know that you're at a point that where you're successful enough to turn down, putting your special out on this streamer, buy it back and sell it yourself. You don't know what the outcome of that is going to be. That's true. You have no idea yep. what the outcome of that is going to be. So yep. you're in uncharted territories right now. You are completely clueless. You just simply don't know. Yep. And that's how we always have to be because that's always, that's how we remain students. Right yep. now you're a student. Yeah. And also like once you make an accomplishment, you probably are going to try to set a new goal. Now you're completely Uncharted territory, that's right. right? That's right. So you, now you know nothing about that new thing that you want that's to accomplish. Right. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We always got to stay students, man. Always. Bro, you said something earlier in the podcast that kind of like, I don't know, it was, it got me thinking a little bit. You were like, I feel closer to God when I'm in Quilla. Yes, in Anguilla, yep. And um, yeah, I think there's something about like natural beauty like, I felt this when I was in Italy, too, mm. where it was like, I would see things and I would go, I completely understand why people believe in God. Because there's no way man could have made something like this. I mean, you just watch a sunset on a fucking cliff oh. and you're just like, this is God. This, I'm looking at God. Bro, I put my, I told my wife, put the time lapse on. Let me see. I told her put the time lapse on just to just to just to just to watch that beautiful sunset, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, literally, me and my wife sat outside, and we do this all the time. But we sat outside and like we just watch falling stars. Yeah. <laughs> like, and like, I'm in the car with my three year old yesterday, and she's like, "I want to see a falling star," just randomly. And I go, "Yo, we saw a bunch of them this week," you know. And so my my six year old goes. To see falling stars, you have to stay up real late, like past 9.30. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth. Like that, yeah. you see nature, it's like, well, because it's, because it's humbling, right? Like, yeah. I think it's very easy to get caught up in the city, like, especially, you know, with the algorithms and our phones and internet, like you get caught in your own bubble, in your own world, and you can be the, the, the champion and the, or the victor in your own world. Right. But you can tell yourself a story. You can tell yourself a story and you can yeah. believe it. And, and that's really valuable. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, it's important to create those stories for yourself to motivate yourself. Whether you're losing 150 pounds, like, that's the story. Like, go fucking get it every single day. But there's something about being around nature. And I think this is why, like, wealthy people who value life tend to put themselves in these environments. It's not just the natural beauty. Like, yeah, of course, you want to see beautiful things. But, like, the, the wealthy people that are, like, trying to get the most out of life, not the ones who are like, I need to buy this really fancy thing. Because then other people will go, look how fancy that guy is. I'm talking about the people who are like getting an estate in Montana. It's expensive, but there's something else happening in Montana. They're doing that to get closer to nature. Yes. And why? Because Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Jackson Hole, Anguilla, yeah. fucking Italy. There's places all around the world. And I really think- The Hamptons. It, the Hamptons. Eh, the Hamptons is very beachy. Yeah, it's beachy, but it's a little scenic. But the, but I hear what you're saying. I've never been like, to the Hamptons. I don't even know why I said that. You're not missing much. The, uh, but there's something about the humility- that nature provides. You might think you're this big fucking shot and then you go in front of 
this amazing ranch in Montana. You go to Anguilla and you watch the fucking sunset. You go on the coast of Amalfi and you're watching the sunrise. It's like, you see these things, you're like, this shit is so much bigger than me. And this is Man. a refreshing feeling that there's something else out there. And I think that as people get more and more successful, I imagine these like even these billionaire motherfuckers, they need that reset. They need to know. Yeah. I mean, listen, go to Kabul and just watch the whales jump out the water. I bet you'll sit your stupid ass down somewhere. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And just watch, and, and, bro. And, 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 and when you see boats in the water and the whales jump by the boats but don't knock the boats over or nothing, you like, the only reason we are, are even, the only reason things are going well for us in this water because that whale is allowing us to. Bro, you know what? <laughs> like, literally. No, it's facts, bro. You're little. You, you you're little. You you're, you're, well, you know what? I agree with you wholeheartedly. But I also, it also can make you feel big. And I'll tell you why. You're like, damn, God created all of this and he created me. Well, and you know, when you really feel that, go yeah. in the ocean and pee, bro. <laughs> and no, I'm no. dead serious. Yeah, 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 like yeah, peeing yeah. in the ocean is one of the most natural things. It's just like, when yeah. you pee in the toilet, you can feel it kind of. When yeah, you pee yeah, in the yeah. ocean, it's just like a release of water. And it's like, a, I'm, I'm sharing with the water. Like here, it's not like you need more. Yeah. But here. <laughs> I don't I'm know what you're serious. talking about, but I'm with what? you. What? I'm dead serious. Just try it. Yo, this feel- is this is one thing I think New York is missing, and it's not peeing in the water, but like the buildings and the way that it's made is in, is a miracle. But at the same time, like unless you live on the water, you don't get that sunrise sunset, man. Like that's like a real luxury in New York, and. That was your biological clock. Yeah. Man. Like for millions of years as we live as human beings, bro. It's like, yeah, oh, man. the sun is coming up. Oh, it's time to get up. Time to do my shit. Oh, the sun's going down. It's time to yeah, go down. Man. Do it. And like, I, I do think that that is a very unnatural thing. And I think it's a really nice thing for us when we get out of the city. I know there's people listening to this that just watch it every single day on their fucking porch or whatever. And they're like, these guys are ridiculous. But that is not something that we get to see. Yeah. And seeing it is, is just. Listen, I grew, up, I grew up in the country, Monk's Corner, South Carolina, so all I knew was nature. Yeah. Like, playing outside was a thing. That's why black people think outside is a smell, because it is. And you know what I'm saying? You only know that if you go outside a lot. You know what okay. I mean? We used to run through cornfields, run through the woods, walk barefoot in the grass. We'd play with, you know, insects, all types of shit. Like, I love nature. Nature is all I know. Nature is the most amazing thing for my mental health. Yep. I promise you, when I'm on these islands, or uh, just walking around the woods somewhere on a nature hike or something. It's like, I don't have any anxiety. It's so wild. It really, it's like, it's just, I can't even describe it. Like, I, And I'm always just trying to figure out ways to just be like psychologically, mentally sound, stable, healthy. Nothing does it for me like nature, bro. Yeah, it's true. Nothing. Man. It's the ultimate, uh, I'm not using the word right, like, because it's not humility. Epidermal? What's the word? Yeah. Epidermis. <laughs> Epidermis. It's the ultimate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a, what is, how do you say the ultimate humbler? The ultimate humbler. Is that it? I, I don't think know. so. Like, it's just, it just, it's hard to sit there and see this and be like, oh, wow, those trees have been growing for hundreds of years. These rock formations have been here for millions of years. Like, you're just seeing all this and you're going, wow, we're here for a very short amount of time. Yes. And there's two ways to go with that. You can go dark with that, like we're insignificant. And then you can go the way you went with it. We're like, how fucking lucky am I that I get to be here now? And then I'm able to do these things now. And uh, 90 to 100 is a long time. I mean, listen, we're not going to be here as long as trees. But I mean, yo, if you live to be 80, 90, you live a good life. You know what I mean? And I, I, I honestly, Ryan, Ryan Holiday, Luther Ryan, Ryan gave me a coin one time and the coin literally was like, you're going to die one day. And I'm like, bro, why would you give me this? You know what Motivation, I mean? Motivation, bro. But it makes Don't you, waste it, it. It's right. It makes you appreciate life. And I, I saw this thing with uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He was talking to Larry King. And um, he asked Larry King, would he want to live forever? Uh, would he want to live to some... I forgot what the... It was a long time frame. Yeah. And Neil was like, if we had that much time, what would be the point? Like, what would be the point of getting out of bed every day knowing yep. that we got tomorrow? Death is the motivator. That Death is the motherfucking motivator, man. Let's uh do some Asking Idiots, Taylor. I mean, get up out of here. Taylor gang. Um, ooh, this is a good one. LJ Havlicek says, what is the best 19, what is the best movie from the 1990s? 
He said best 90s movie, but that's the 1900s. What's the best 90s movie? I'm confused on timing of movies now. Like, is Ghostbusters the 90s or is that the 80s? Like, that might have been 1980s. 1980s. I'm sure there were some sequels in the 90s. Though it had to be because Bobby Brown was in one. The Matrix. Is that 90s, yo? I think it was 99. So I was talking to my girl about some nah, shit last night. Matrix the 90s, is it? I think it was 99. Google it. What's the Matrix? When the Matrix came out? I mean, the Matrix was crazy. If that's 90s, forget it. Was that the 90s? When did the first Matrix movie come out? First Matrix movie. Or oh, 99? 99. Wow. Yeah. I don't count that. That's yeah, that's... No, nah, that's well, I, the best '90s movie. I, I mean, it's a lot to me. I put Pulp Fiction up there. I keep, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking like the epics, like when we were kids, like when not Stand by Me or whatever that fucking movie Stand was. Stand by Me was fire. Stand by Me is that the Stand the, by Me is the white boys in the hood. Yeah, white boys in the woods. White boys in the woods. Yeah, Where are you going? yeah. The boys in the hood. This it's kind of centered, not centered, but it starts off with them finding. You want to go see a dead body? Yeah, that was staring by me. Yeah, want to go? When they, weren't they going to see a dead body by the tracks? If I'm not mistaken, yes, I think so. Yeah. And then what was the the Goonies? Like another one like that? Remember I think that was the '80s. I never seen that. That was '80s, but like I'm trying to think of those movies like '90s. Ferris Bueller's Day Off. That's the 80s. Like, that's definitely the '80s. That's definitely the '80s. You just put black movies in the nineties. <laughs> Fridays up. Fridays one. Oh, okay, Fridays no. Legendary, Friday. Bro. By the way, all of these is classic. Friday, Boys in the Hood, Minister Society. Yo, Bad Boys one. Bad Boys one. Crazy. Love Jones. That's my wife's favorite movie. People sleep on Set It Off. Set It Off is so fucking good. Set It Off. White men can't jump. What Juice. happens when you Google white movies in the 90s? Yeah, put white nineties. <laughs> just kind of curious. Taylor, like, Taylor yeah. just put best black movies. Yeah. yeah. Put, Best white movies. Put just best put white that. movies That's of really the 90s. Funny. Matter of fact, time out, time out. You don't even have to put white. Just put best movies of the 90s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> just yeah, put yeah. best movies of the 90s. Best movies of the 90s. Okay, let's see what we got. Oh, Goodfellas. Come the fuck on. Oh, yeah. Goodfellas. Yeah, I didn't know Goodfellas was the 90s. But this oh, is good. Yeah. Mm. Now, Clueless was fire. Rush Hour. Oh, Rush, Rush Hour, Hour, crazy. They got Society up there. Keep going, keep Oh, Casino. Friday, yeah. Unbelievable. Casino. Heat fire. probably was out too. That was amazing. Cry Baby was good. Johnny Depp. I American I Pie. Wow. Yeah. I didn't realize so We had bangers the in the 90s, man. Go, keep going, keep going. What else? Ugh. What do we got here? Oh, Adam Sandler had a run in the 90s. Holy shit. Oh, Adam Sandler. Yeah, he owned that. Shit. I mean... Titanic. Oh, Titanic forget sucked. it. What? Titanic I, I would have just breathed on the water. That's right. That's how I would have got That's out. right. I would have just breathed the, on the none water of them and even I would have died. Or none of them even tried. I don't feel cold. They didn't even try. They just, they just was like, fuck it. They didn't even test their powers. I hope your wife sends me the video of you trying to breathe underwater <laughs> and you just go. <laughs> 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 oh, the Blair Witch <laughs> Project. <laughs> Blair Witch is fire. Blair Witch is good. Especially when I thought oh, it was dude, real. Ace Ventura? You just called Titanic trash and you said Blair Titanic Witch trash, is fire. bro. Come on, bro. What? Blair Witch was fire. The first Blair Witch? Especially when I thought it was real. <laughs> Titanic was trash. Bro. This guy believes <laughs> everything, bro. Titanic? <laughs> yeah. I, I just didn't like it. <laughs> she shared the board. What happened? At the end, Rose should have shared there was enough for two of them to be on the board she was selfish and let uh what you call die really yes yeah he's broke fuck she gonna do with his ass when they get back home that's just a nice little fling for the boat ride oh she was fucking him yeah, yeah. i forgot about you all that the movie? no yeah, yeah. <laughs> he dicked that no. down in a model t model t smashed <laughs> fogged up the windows they had model t's on the boat why did they have cars on the boat? Because they, they had to get the cars from London to America, bro. Should have drove one off that motherfucker. Facts, though. Like, there got to be something that could float in there, right? Like, nah, they didn't plan that very well, but still. She also had the jewelry, kept that shit. For no know, reason. Gold digging ass. Let's go to some, let's go to some <laughs> ass. <laughs> Taylor. Did they ever just recover all those bodies from the Titanic? Nah. They just down there, frozen. Uh... <laughs> 
Because <laughs> they didn't try to breathe, bro. They didn't try to breathe. That's why they died. They, they <laughs> Big Mickey says, if the world was the end tomorrow and you had one last thing to say from radio or stage. If, if the world was ending tomorrow, what the fuck would make you think I'd be on the radio? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the fuck? You think that's why I want to spend my last day on this planet? Nah. What are you my, doing? I'm going to Anguilla with my family. We all going to breathe right. underwater. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's what the fuck going to happen. Why would this the hell? The world, first of all, if the world was the end tomorrow, it'd be chaos if everybody knew the world was ending yeah. tomorrow. Like, there would be nobody. They might be listening to the radio. I doubt they would be coming to a show, though. <laughs> Do you yeah, think? Yeah, no. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Man, I don't. I mean, I don't. The last show has something. Do you have something? What if you're already on the radio and then you find out, and I'm already at a show and then you find out? No, I no, that would be fire. Everybody's listening because I've been listening. I've been waiting for that. I know for a fact that Orson Welles' War of the Worlds moment is coming. Mm. I think it's probably gonna happen on social media, right? But Orson Welles got on the radio and told everybody UFOs was coming. The aliens. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, and, and, and people were wild. He was playing, but people were wild. People lost their minds. They mind. lost their minds. So I don't know if I would want that responsibility to say that the world is going to end tomorrow. Plus, I'm not going to believe it. <laughs> you really think any of us would believe that shit? What? They told us the world was ending tomorrow. Bro, we don't believe anything. No, we would we not believe. believe They'd be just like, don't look anymore. up. We'd be like, man, what the fuck, man? Shit. Get a glizzy and enjoy your day, yo. <laughs> okay. Let's do one more. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, Jordan Cole V says, Biden again or Trump again? Whoa. That's a tricky one, huh? Trump, people start tearing themselves apart again. The country is just, it's just the, the fucking animosity and the anger and the vitriol people have. That's just fucking exhausting to live in, to be honest with it's you. Gonna, it's going to be there whether it's Trump or not, though. Say what? It's going to be there whether it's Trump or not. But it, the, the temperature is much cooler with Biden. He's just, is he's it? just yeah. dead. But if he was, if, <laughs> but like, but the cool, it's a cooler temperature in my is opinion. It? Yeah. You don't I, feel that? No. Oh, wow. I feel like it's much oh. cooler. No. You're lying. Put it like this. If that's the case, then Trump's not, Trump has never been The whole been the country issue. was on fire for like a year. Because the country's on fire. Like, we got to stop <laughs> acting like who's ever in the fucking White House really dictated the country. The country was on fire during Obama. The country was on fire during the Clintons. Nah, dude. Like, man, y'all, I, I, I promise you, I'm watching this Obama documentary yesterday. The things they were saying in the doc is like they were saying it yesterday. Well, that's like, the, the thing. The country's that, going into a recession and, you know. Nothing changed. Racism. Bro. Nothing changed. It's on repeat, bro. That's <laughs> why you got to live your life. Do what Duval does, man. Just live your life. Once you realize it doesn't change, it's man, all a game. I agree. Unplug. I agree. Get it in. Like, I promise. Go home. Everybody out there, watch the Obama doc. It's on HBO. It's three parts. Watch that doc and listen to the rhetoric from the 90s. When Clinton was in office, mm. listen to the rhetoric when Obama was in office, Bush, whoever, it all sounds exactly like it sounds now. Fighting for voting rights. Uh, 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 what the fuck did I just say? Fighting for voting rights. Um, we're headed into a recession. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same. Roe v. Wade needs to be called by all of the same exact shit. <laughs> all of the same exact shit. Nothing has changed. So it's like Biden again or Trump again? Let's see. Let's go autopilot for a while. We ain't try that yet. We, we ain't try that yet. Like, let's go autopilot for a while. Let's, I think we kind of autopilot. I, yeah, I think we are on autopilot. <laughs> the, the president really is just a figurehead, but that's fine. You need somebody for us to be angry at. You need somebody for us to blame. We are kind of on autopilot. I promise bro. you, Joe Biden or Donald Trump is not to blame. This country had... All, all of them, all, no, I, both yeah. of them, all, every president in the last however 20 years has dealt with circumstances beyond their control. Yeah. America created a system. The system, I believe, is not working for everybody the way that it should. But that that's the point of the president. A lot of people don't realize it. The point of the president is for us to point the finger at and be like, this is your fault, even though yes. this system has been put in place. Yes. Right? Yes. And the ship keeps moving no yes. matter what. Right? Yes. So... It's you get four years to be blamed or eight years to be blamed. Yes. What you want? And one thing Obama kept saying in this documentary, he was like, I hope none of y'all expect. He said, he, but he, he kept saying this. I hope nobody believes that I'm going to change America in four years or eight years. Like he like he kept saying that. Yeah, yeah. But it, what he had was 
hope. That's and, and, and one reason I'm not even mad at Obama after watching that doc is like, that's really all he sold. Yeah. Hope is a hope. drug, bro. His, it, he called it the audacity of hope. Yeah. That's literally all it was. I'm going to provide you hope. It's the motherfuckers that say, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that and I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to make this happen. Yeah, yeah. Those are the ones we get mad at because now we're like, why the fuck you lie to me, bro? I'm going to make you hope it will happen. <laughs> <laughs> but he also ran on the slogan of change. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so like, that's he, said, he said, he said, change we can believe in. He didn't say I was going to actually make change. <laughs> he said, this is change that I'm offering. I'm, I'm offering another way. But there was this guy on the dock. I can't remember his name. He said, um, man, I, I forgot how he worded it, but he was like, the, the, the level of delusion you have to have. <laughs> to believe you could change America. Be, no, not to change America, to believe that white supremacy won't always be white supremacy. Because, you know, Barack spent a lot of his time not addressing white supremacy, not addressing racism until he right. got caught up with the Reverend Jeremiah Wright thing. And then he gave this whole speech mm. on race. But it was interesting because they played a speech, but they got guys like Cornell Weston talking about the speech uh, in real time. And they're uh, like, he was lying right there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he shouldn't have said it like this because that's not true. And I just found that so interesting. But it was like, yo, Barack, because of his experiences, growing up with a white mother, white grandmother, like being half white. Yeah. His experience with whiteness was different. Absolutely. So he saw white people in a totally different way than probably every other minority. And you can't be mad at him. Not that's at all. his experience. He he experienced love from a white woman. Yeah. He experienced love from I imagine his white grandmother. Yeah, it's it's yeah, probably hard right. to hate a group of people that are loving. He also grew up in Hawaii and I think this is really important for people to understand. White people are not the majority in Hawaii and white people are how do I say this? Like kind of look down their second tier in Hawaii. Mm. So and in Hawaii, Barack passes as Hawaiian. So he grew up in a place where when people saw him, they didn't see a black guy. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, that's that skinny Samoan guy or that's mm -hmm. that skinny Hawaiian guy. So he grew up as the majority and the accepted group. Yeah. Even though his mother who raised him was white. They call white people like Howley's over there, right? So it's like he had a very unique situation. Yeah. He wasn't the black guy that's walking in around the white neighborhood being looked at all the time and feeling like second class citizen. He's the black and white guy that's passing as Hawaiian, walking around Hawaii like, oh, yeah, I'm normal. Everybody accepts me. This is my people. And they're treating you as if you are one yeah. of them. And growing up in Indonesia. He said in Indonesia, he was just American. Well, that that's probably the first time that he was like, oh, I'm an outsider, outsider. Yeah, but, he, but either way, he was, he was still getting treated like an outsider. Yeah. Because he was American. Yeah. But his, his experiences are, are, are totally different. But long story short, it don't matter who's in the White House. America been having the same old problems for a long time. And we will mother, continue. And we will continue <laughs> to have these same fucking problems. That's why I can't wait to see who does win in 2024. Because then, then people will probably really notice it like, Shit, they still talking about goddamn the same shit. voting rights? They still so, talking about Roe v. Wade? Like, nothing is going to change. Uh, make sure you go get the tickets for the Black Effect Podcast Festival. Yes. Uh, BlackEffect.com slash PodFest. Tickets are on sale right now. It happens August 28th uh, at the Mirage in Brooklyn. 85 South Show. Horrible decisions. Reasonably shady. Huge. All the smoke. Bunch of Huge. your favorite podcasts. Food, vendors, drinks, all of that good stuff. Uh, so join us. Go get your tickets. BlackEffect.com slash podcast festival. And as always, if you listen. Oh, and get Andrew special. TheAndrewShows.com. Go get it right there. This Sunday. Order it. Infamous. We're all watching. This Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Go get that shit right now. Bet Online is going to match that uh, money that you buy for the special. They're going to put it uh, for you to make a bet so you can do that. That's awesome. Shouts enough for that. But, uh, but yeah, go get it right now. Let's run it up. Let's change the fucking game, man. It's really up to y'all. If y'all, if y'all, if y'all, Rock with this, then the game has changed, man, and that I, I, that would be wild. And then, and, that would and, be wild. And that's when the streamers gonna come and give you whatever the fuck you want. Well, that's when I have a number. Want, but but you know why they <laughs> gonna, they gonna do that? Because they're gonna be like, we cannot let this model keep going. <laughs> they're paying you for the model. <laughs> <laughs> As always, listen to this podcast. You think we're smart. You think we're intelligent. You think we're brilliant. You're absolutely right. But. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.